inside the architecture channel. We visit the Biblioteca Laurenciana in San Lorenzo. There is also a script. You can find it in the info box. In the winter of 1523-24, Pope Clement VII of the Medici family decided to build a separate structure for his house's valuable book collection and commissioned Michelangelo to design the Biblioteca Laurentiana. The foundation of the collection was formed by 600 manuscripts that Cosimo the Elder had once donated to the monastery of San Marco and which had now been bought back. Today the library holds about 150,000 books, including early works from the beginning of printing in the 15th and 16th century, but also about 11,000 manuscripts and about 2,500 papyri. The Book of Hours of Lorenzo the Magnificent is one of the treasures of the library. A Book of Hours was a personal prayer and devotional book. Manuscripts of Napoleon are also kept here. Michelangelo began construction in 1524 at the fact that this was another important commission he had been busy decorating the new sacristy for four years, can be seen in the many drawings made during the preparatory phase. Two years later, the shell of the vestibule and library hall was probably completed. The further execution of the building was delayed by Michelangelo's long absence. However, even after his departure from Florence in 1534, the artist continued to participate in the construction by letter and with models. Giorgio Vasari and Bartolomeo Amenati turned the plans into reality. However, the library could not be opened until 1571 after Michelangelo's death. The vestibule, it is the representative entrance hall is one of the most idiosyncratic spaces ever realized. Nowhere are the forms in the usual architectural context. The space is extremely steep. The flight of steps is oversized in relation to its narrowness. Thus, the building is considered the most important testimony to the architecture of Mannerism in Florence. Mannerism existed in Italy as a parallel direction to Renaissance architecture. It is characterized by the slight dissolution or alienation of the classical systems of order of the Renaissance. If we look to the staircase and the wall of the vestibule, in several places, the architectural rules are alienated. The pairs of columns are not in front of the wall, as usual, but in it. Freestanding columns would also have been quite inappropriate in this narrow space and would also have required support on the first floor. The wall themselves, it seems, are divided into blocks and pairs of columns and some of the wall blocks leap forward while others recede, so that it is unclear where the actual boundary of the room lies. The tabernacle windows are traditionally part of the exterior architecture. In this way, the visitor is given the impression that he is still outside, not actually inside the library. Moreover, the high plinth zone suggests to him that he is not on the level of the main floor, but on that of the basement. Also the niches are too shallow to support figural decoration, and their lateral pilasters become narrower instead of wider toward the bottom. And the delicate volutes or spiral curls of the lowest floor 
are much too weak to actually support the columns. Michelangelo had previously made a clay model for the staircase. Here, as the visitor climbs the central staircase, he must overcome, as it were, the resistance of the convex shapes of the steps which thrust themselves towards him as if in a lava flow. This creates a slight uncertainty which is quite intentional in the sense of mannerism. Other interpretations compare this broad tripartite construction with a cascade of waterfall. Once one has reached the top step, one then stands very abruptly before the threshold of the library. We have here one of the earliest examples of something actually incidental, like a staircase, becoming the subject of an artistic exploration. Staircases were to become increasingly important in secular buildings in later centuries. For example, in the roughly contemporaneous French castle complex at Chambord on the Loire, designed by Leonardo da Vinci, shown here on the left, or much later in Balthasar Neumann's Würzburg residence in the 18th century in the Baroque period. Once inside the library, the visitors are greeted by a comparatively relaxed, harmonious atmosphere. The elongated shape of the room is countered by the dividing pilasters. Michelangelo himself designed the reading desks at the ceiling. It was not until 1841 that the annex in the form of a rotunda was added. The room shows the furnishings typical of 16th century libraries. The reader took a seat on a reading bench resembling the peeves of a church. On the sloping desk lie the desired book which the librarian had prepared. The reading benches still have the original long narrow boards on the front sides on which, as a forerunner of the library catalogue, the stocks were listed in handwriting which were kept in the compartments under the reading desks. So if you needed another book, you had to change the place. For the reader, they fastened the individual book on the desk with a chain to prevent its uncontrolled removal and to ensure the correct location of the volume. The red and white terracotta floor is decorated with ornamental motifs and symbolic images which can also be found on the ceiling alluding to the Medici dynasty. For example, the motto Semper, always, which was part of the family coat of arms, is repeated over and over again. This brings us to the end of our guided tour. If you liked the video, we appreciate a like and a subscription to our channel. If you would like to see videos about other buildings, feel free to write in the comments.